Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope uh, my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends. And I know all of you and apologize for being so late, but it's okay. May Allah forgive you. And uh, we pray to Allah that he will not take some of your versions in heaven in case you are a male. And uh, we pray to Allah that Allah will not de you know, decrease your beauty if you are a female. As you remember, Prophet of Allah, he says, a Muslim woman, she will be in heaven 70 times more pretty, which is so good to be true. And, you know, the funny is, if you are going to be all of you 70 times more pretty, that means nothing change. Because still, the one who was more pretty on you on earth, she will be 70 times more pretty than you. Hmm. Anyway, the smart Muhammad is always win. Who am I to win against Muhammad? Today, our topic is about crying you know we notice that muslims when they are in front of a camera uh, you know they uh, they have a special reaction but obviously this uh, reaction only in front of the camera i don't know why people even uh, something personal you know like something uh, if you are believing if you are affected by uh, reading something why you want to record that in camera i mean it doesn't make sense to me unless you like to show off you know, in the Bible, it says that the Lord, the Messiah, he said to us, when you want to pray, go to your closet. Uh, if we go right now, uh, and we do a little search in the uh, in, in YouTube, peace be upon him, you will find that there is people who do for make, you know, make living from saying stupid things, like reaction to Quran. Look, wow, this, this guy. Man, yeah, reaction to the Quran. Look, even the cows, even the cows. Look, look, and this is not my video. <clears throat> I did not make this video. This is a video made by Muslims. Reaction, Alhamdulillah, reaction, the cows, the cows, the cows, reaction on when, uh, here, Surah Al Baqarah, the chapter of the cow. The Muslims are playing the chapter of the cow to the cows. <laughs> okay, and what the cows they do? <laughs> they cry. <laughs> but brother, the cow do not understand what they are what you, what you are saying in the Quran. Even you, as a Muslim, you cannot understand what the what the chapter is saying. <laughs> Not only the cow. <laughs> so you can, how you can have reaction for something you can't understand? But anyway, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you do. Muslims, you know, they, look, I mean, reaction, you know, reaction to the Quran. Yeah, you know, this is a business like anyone today. He have nobody in his channel, nobody coming. He make uh, those videos so they can get, you know, oof, reaction to the Quran. Non-Muslim reaction on the Quran. Uh, okay, and this guy is me having a reaction too. This is the same guy. Uh, what this, this guy is doing? Yeah, the reaction of Sheikh Omran. Sheikh Omran is this believer now. Look at this guy. And yeah, reaction of the Quran. Yeah. Anyway, we have a we have a real reason for reaction in the Quran. You know, far away from those all those things. Why in the most Muslims they cry when they are forget about those scammers who make those uh, videos. But there is a real reason, scientifically proven to be true. When you are reciting the Quran, uh, you will be affected. Let us hear what is a mean, huge reason the Muslims get affected when they are praying with Muslims. Brothers and sisters, Islamic TV program, they are very serious. Each time the Muslim they want to pray, there is some Muslims, they start releasing gas. Serious. This is not about doubt, maybe he released it or not. No, he did. He farted non-stop. 
during the prayer. Oh, you cannot hear? Oh, okay, hold on. You cannot hear. Oh, because uh, the fault was so loud. Hold on. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, okay. Now you will hear. Okay, now we will hear. Who do not have a mosque in their area, who could not go and offer congregation. Mm. They look for a mosque, they could not find one. Okay. This year, uh -huh. Allah Azza gave them a masjid to pray five times. Again. Finally. However, However, this person, uh -huh. whenever they go to pray, yeah. The moment they stand up to pray, gas is released all the time. And this no. is not a doubt. This person certainly knows something came out. Oh, boy. And this only happens whenever he prays. Mm. This, the person, this individual... This guy, he don't fart all day long. He fart only when he pray. It must be there is a reason. Must be there is a reason. You Are you kidding me? I mean, how come he don't fart all day, and now he go to the mosque, and now he start <clears throat> like non-stop, you know? So what do you expect the Muslim they would do? Some they are crying because he ate too much eggs or onion. Some they are crying from the chemical weapon just released and the smoke. Some they are crying because their uh, prayer is uh, destroyed. Because in Islam, if you fart, your prayer is gone. You know, there's a connection between farting and receiving the prayer by Allah. Yeah. So this guy, which is a very common situation in Islamic mosque. He prays. This, the first, this individual contemplated over it and, real, and realized that Shaitan was trying to make him stop praying. Ah, so, it is Shaitan. It is Shaitan. What if I show you that Muhammad he said that Shaitan, when you pray, will take hair from your anus and he will not stop doing that. He straight it out, he pull it out, and he will not stop doing that until he make you fart and he hear it and he smell it. In fact, there is a video we played before here, if you remember, about about this topic. Uh, you know, shaitan fought, uh, how shaitan he played with the anus of Muslims. So the anus of a Muslim is very much a target. You know, the, he is a center of conspiracy. His anus, this is why I, I'm assuming, I mean, if all those things happen to your anus just because you're a Muslim, I don't know how it looked like. I don't know, you, you, you must have like, a, it's red, it's, there is inflammatory, uh, inflammation, uh, pimples, I mean, shaitan is targeting you. So the guy, he go, uh, show you? What do you mean show you? I cannot show you how it work. Shame on you. What do you mean show us? Ah, show us the hadith. <laughs> bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> I thought you want me to show you how the Muslim, uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, you got me there, you got me there. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, you know, <clears throat> uh, Satan, uh, you know, uh, he target Muslims. It's very well known. Uh, you know, he don't like them to pray to Allah. And he try to disturb them. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to find you. The original video, short one, you know. Satan fought. Hold on. Oh, here we go. That is a we good look at one. That is a good one. Okay. So either you know there is a there is reason for this uh, love. When you okay. This is a video here. Let us see this video here. And by the way, this is all proven to be scientifically true. Uh, shaitan, he do those things, you know. He's evil. What do you expect? I mean, he's just a shaitan. Hmm. What do you expect from shaitan? So what shaitan he do to Muslims usually? You give the adhan. The shaitan, he not only runs, 
But the hadith says lahu durat. You know what durat is? No. Durat is. Oh, okay. He runs, and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Oh. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So now we find that Muslims they fart when they are praying. Shaitan he fart when he hear the prayer. There's a connection between Allah prayer farting. Everybody is farting. Muslim farting, Shaitan farting. Okay, now Shaitan he fart because he just heard the prayer. La akbar, la akbar, <coughs> not nonstop. They are here. By the way, this is true. Proven. Okay, many of you you have a doubt about this. I can show you a reference from the website of TASA. TASA is an American, uh, you know, website uh, for uh, a spaceship owned by uh, this guy. His name uh, uh, Elon Dusk. You know. Uh, so uh, uh, TASA, uh, they found that uh, in in the atmosphere, at atmosphere not in the atmosphere atmosphere it's a different level like you know it's hard for you to explain anyway you guys are not educated so at the atmosphere uh, they found that there's certain gas there is no way it was originally happening normally must come in from the the gas of shaitan alone because they call it even satanic gas you know satanic gas uh -huh. so this is proving to be uh, you know it's not nasa tasa tasa you know <sighs> ignorant uh, here we go they they change names you know they corrupt the bible those christians they change the uh, torah and now here we go uh, 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 tasa become nasa here we go you know you know why they change the name because they don't want to see they don't want to say that tasa is an islamic word and the and the predicted by prophet muhammad you know don't tasbih tasa, you know, tasbih, tas, tasbih, you know, like subhanallah. Okay, now, so shaitan he fought, and why? Because a Muslim he is called for the adhan. That will get us close to the topic and to understand the situation. Listen carefully. So now, okay, uh, Shaykh, can you, I mean, I like it when you fought with your hands, man. I mean, Muslim, they can fart in any way. Not necessarily from their anus, even from the hand. But the hadith says, Lahu durat. Mm. You know what durat is? Durat is. <laughs> he runs, and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu <laughs> durat. I'm not making this hadith. You see? He's not making it up. Don't laugh. This is hadith. The Prophet says so. The Prophet, who want to tell you the truth about Jesus and the truth about Moses and the truth about Abraham, he know all the truth. And this is one of the truth. Shaitan fart. The Prophet said, this is the truth, tell her. Okay, tell us more. Shaitan fart. What happened next? So you, that Shaitan made me do sin? Ah, oh, get up. Yeah, <laughs> just get up. Just give the adhan. Right? That shaitan, you're gonna make him, you're gonna make him leak some serious gas. Oh boy. Serious gas. No way. So, you know, you're going to the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabais. So, if, if, Allah if, if. protect me from these devils. The Prophet, he said to them to pray this prayer before you enter the bathroom. I'm telling you, the Prophet, he tell nothing but the truth. If you don't enter the bathroom with this prayer, what will happen to you? Tell them, Sheikh, tell them. Say again, what is the prayer? Make him leak some serious gas. Serious gas. So, you know, you're going to the toilet. You know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuthi wal khabais. So, Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The <laughs> dua you said, Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, Shaitan can't see you anymore. It's in the see the benefit, it's in the hadith. The Prophet says that. You go in the bar, in the toilet, uh, you know, you say this prayer, Allahumma jandibni shaitana wa jandib shaitana ma razaqtani. That's it. You became invisible. Actually, I did that. And the other day, I robbed a bank. And you know, in my way, like, uh, you know, they, they, they could not, they cannot see me in the camera, no security, nobody. I just took the money and came out. Why? Because I said this prayer, you know? And what happened that they put the safe in the bathroom, which perfectly fit with the prayer of Allah. 
it was a bathroom before and then the bank transformed the bathroom into safe so it's bathroom subhanallah i said the prayer i went inside i got the money i came out nobody saw me you become invisible okay my friend you are asking me a question why muslims just hold your horses we have a which one is, is more important now the question you're asking me or the fart i mean show respect for fart why people you know we are talking about a very serious matter muslims are praying in the mosque they cry we want to know why they cry there's reasons to cry Okay, now you go in the bathroom and you say this prayer. Shaitan, he don't see you. What if you don't say this prayer? Yes. So, you know, you go into the toilet. You know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabaith. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you... You have to remember, left foot idiot. Don't enter with the right foot. Potato. Only left foot. I'm warning you. Left foot. And this one. I mean, those people do not even know which one the left. Okay, I will tell you which one is the left. If you look at the mirror, you know, if you look at the mirror, you will see a foot. All right. The one in the left in the mirror is the left foot. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I was number one student in the classroom, but there is no other student except me, like Muhammad. Okay, tell us more, tell us more. So what, okay? When in, you get a reward for that. The dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, yeah, right? Yeah. If you don't say the dua... Stop. If you don't say this prayer, what will happen? I want you to take, take... No, this is serious. This is serious. We're trying to find out why they cry not see you you're in the toilet shaitan can't see you anymore that's in a hadith right if you don't say the dua if you don't say the dua what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside but the hadith of tidmid says he plays with your bowels oh boy oh boy oh mommy Oh, mommy, mommy blue. Oh, mommy blue. Oh, mommy. Somebody blowing your anus. Oh, mommy blue. Uh, Muslim, somebody blowing your anus. You ain't he? Shaitan, he played with your bones. So now we started with farting. We end with somebody playing inside your bones. Let us go back to the previous video. So we can make a connection. You know, we have to connect the dot, like you know, like you know, in the, like in the movies, you know, like in the uh, in Inspector, you know, uh, what his name, uh, the Pink Panther, you know. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, uh, tell us more. He tried to fight it. Shaitan was trying to make him stop praying. Shaitan. So he tried to fight it. Uh huh. By ignoring it, but then it kept on coming and coming and coming. <laughs> Every time he stood up to pray something came out whether silent or loud <laughs> i want to know how she knew about the silent one <laughs> you know when the muhammad and they say things i go i mean i cannot believe it you know i mean maybe most of you will listen to this you don't notice what she's saying she just said either it's silent or loud how she was able to figure out the, the silent one <laughs> I wanna <know. laughs> as long as it is silent <laughs> this is a serious Islamic TV station brother this is Dawa Dawa TV Allahu Akbar so, so, so what are you kidding me they are spending millions of dollars to open TV station. And the Sheikh, you know, his salary is big. This guy is answering serious questions now. This is a serious topic. Um, I mean, come on. We have to take it seriously. Okay, so either what and what? All the time. And this is not a doubt. This person certainly <laughs> knows something came out. And this only happens whenever he prays. 
this the first this individual contemplated over it and re <coughs> and realized that Satan was trying to make him stop praying. Oh boy! So he tried to fight it. Oh. By ignoring. Like you know, by ignoring it. <laughs> I like the Islamic intelligence. <laughs> he he fight the fart by trying to ignore it. <laughs> what did that mean? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I cannot continue. I can't breathe. I laugh so hard. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Oh boy. Ah, uh, that's so good to be true. You got to love Islam, brother. You got to love Islam. Okay. So he is trying to. He fighting it by trying to ignore it. Can he teach us how to ignore a fart? I mean, how how you do that? How you do that? Like I, I can ignore a person. I can ignore uh, ignoring a gas inside you, and when I come out, and obviously you you know, but by ignoring it, uh. and realize that Satan was trying to make him stop praying, so he tried to fight it by ignoring it. Mm. But then it kept on coming and coming and coming. Every time he stood up to pray, something came out. Do you have a recording? Was it silent or loud? So, uh, uh, ma'am, do you have a recording, please? You know why you don't record it in the video? <laughs> so the sheikh he can get a visual, uh, you know, understanding of situation. It keep coming and coming and coming. The fart is coming and coming and coming. Subhanallah. In the house of Allah and Allah cannot stop. Okay, hold on. So you Muslim, you say this is the house of Allah. When you are praying, there's two angels, one in the right and one in the left. And now all those angels could not stop shaitan from making you Muslims fart. In the house of Allah. It keep coming and coming. I, I thought she would sing it, you know. You, what? So he tried to fight it by ignoring it. Hmm. But then it kept on coming and coming and coming. Every time he stood up to pray, something came out. Whether silent or loud. So he... There's color? <laughs> no one... There's any color, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> okay now let's go back to the previous movie so now we can connect the dot together now I think the image is clear for many of you who they are not educated of such a uh, he plays with the bowels so you're inside there you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes he's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there <laughs> And do you see the music in the back? This is holy music, brother. We are talking about fart and guys and anus. And the Muslim, they play for you holy music. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, this is supposedly Islamic video. Come on, we have to play those sounds behind, you know? Uh, okay. In there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. Right the dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with your bowels. Serious? So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. Yeah, He's right. taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. Sad. You know why? Because Uncle shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. I'm telling you, this is very serious. You know, put, 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 your, put, put yourself <clears throat> in the bathroom uh, instead of a Muslim. You are a Muslim now and you don't say the prayer. Man, oh man. 
My Skype is open. If there is any Muslim who would like to share with us and tell me why Muslims, they cry when they hear the Quran, especially when they are in front of the camera. I mean, isn't it this is obvious that you are trying to make a show? Why you want to cry? You know, I was live, live on air, and I received a text message saying that your father passed away. I did not cry. I did not even tell anyone. I finished my program as if nothing happened. And the Lord is my witness. Why somebody is a believer want to do such a show and he have a camera in front of him recording him and he knew that he is recorded in the camera? Don't you have a shame? I say that Muslims, they cry for many reasons. Shaitan play with their anus, as you see. Muhammad, he said, Shaitan take hair from your anus until he make you fart. But I can say that if somebody take hair from your anus, I think you will cry. Try it, try it, try it, you know. <clears throat> I'm assuming it hurt. <laughs> I never tried it because I'm not a Muslim. Uh, the second reason for Muslims to cry when they hear the Quran because the Quran is so stupid if you don't believe me and if you are a Muslim you can call me and we can give you some verses from the Quran and you tell me what they mean just tell me what they, what they mean you will cry Other reason Muslims they cry beside not understanding what they are reading or what they are hearing, they don't speak Arabic. So even Arab who speak Arabic cannot understand the Quran. What about those who they are from Pakistan and they are listening to the Quran? Now for sure there's more reasons for uh, crying, Muslims are crying in the mosque. Uh, Like those Pakistani Imam. <clears throat> Crying because Muslims are writing the name of a Prophet Muhammad. May Allah shine on him. Uh, you can find this video in Adam Seeker website uh, page in YouTube translated by him I don't speak Urdu I used to speak Urdu by the way but then what happened to me is the same as the story of Alexander the Great I invited people to Islam they hit me in my head I got the first horn Allah then he resurrected me brother then I came again to Pakistan at that time it was not called Pakistan it was called uh, 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 east of Timur at that time yeah it was in Indonesia at that time because I'm coming from long time I'm talking long time not not now you know I'm talking like 20 years ago okay so uh, it was in Indonesia Pakistan and then you know when there is an earthquake when the when the uh, the big uh, ox the cow who carrying the earth move as Prophet Muhammad said uh, you know uh, the, uh, the location of Pakistan moved from uh, uh, Indonesia and Brazil all the way to uh, uh, you know uh, to Cairo. Anyway, so now those sheikhs, they are crying and they will make a nice show crying in the in the TV because Muslims are writing the names of the Prophet Muhammad on their penises. Pakistan mein 4 lakh hai 120 log giraftar ho chuke hain 11 logon ko sazaye maut ho chuki hai hum kare to kare kya kis darwaze par dastak de hum ye sawal karna chahte kya hum mulk mein jalao gherao kare aapke mulk mein to haal ye ho gaya hai ki dariya kisam ke log aapke haan lectures de rahe hain aur ye 
किसी एक घर की कहानी नहीं है अब घर घर की कहानी बन चुकी है एक आलम दीन तो हीन करते हुए पकड़ा गया आज उन्होंने मुझे जो रिपोर्ट दिखाई है उस रिपोर्ट को देखकर मेरे रोंग पे खड़े हो गए ये सब इस मुल्क में हो रहा है ए वाले दिन अपना हक अदा करो बच्चों की निगरानी करो और बच्चों की निगरानी हमने इस तरह से करनी है उस दिन मुफ्ती अबू मोहम्मद साहब ने एक एप्लीकेशन की तरफ इशारा किया था कि घर के डिवाइसेस से उसको मुंसलिक करो माँ बाप निगरानी करे इस वक्त आपके मुल्क को तबाह करने की साजिश की जा रही है मैं सिर्फ इशारा तन अर्ज कर रहा हूँ फैसल कुरैशी साहब प्राइवेट पार्ट पर लाला मोहम्मद Now they stand up to join the crime. Yeah, okay. One, two, three. All of you cry in the same time in front of TV because this is how you prove that you are a believer. Because Muslims are writing the name of a prophet Muhammad on their penises. <laughs> <laughs> do you want tissue, please? Do you want tissue? Oh boy. और इस मुल्क का अमन, इस मुल्क की तबाही करने के लिए इस हद तक मेरा दुश्मन गिर जाएगा। इस मुल्क में आग लग जाए। You know, uh, so this is other reason Muslims they cry on TV. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they don't understand the Quran. Shaitan make them fart in the mosque. Shaitan play with their anus. Uh, they don't know what they can do. Uh, I mean, there is endless reasons. They can't understand the Quran. They can't understand what it's saying. It's stupid. It's etc. Uh, I don't know. If there is any Muslim, he don't agree with us and he would like to join us and tell us what he think about what we show on the screen uh, regarding Muslims, you know, uh, crying and suffering from farting and shaitan playing with their anus and all this uh, horrible, horrible conspiracy against Islam. Uh, please uh, just text me in uh, uh, in Skype and I will take your, uh, you know, I will take your uh, call immediately. <clears throat> uh, yeah, like, you know, we have customer service, as you know. Time is you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, was a, a commercial for Bud, Bud Light, who they uh, get screwed. Because they decide to challenge the Christians and promote uh, the transgender. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another reason for Muslims to cry. Let us hear this reason. Assalamu alaikum. My heart is breaking. Oh, brothers and sisters, my soul is aching. Brothers and sisters, did you know that so many people are leaving Islam every day? No. Way. Why would anybody leave such a beautiful religion? Why would they choose to become a sick disbeliever instead? Audhu billah. Brothers and sisters, 100,000 Muslims are leaving Islam every single year. Over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is not a joke. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. Yes, we say that there are 1.6 billion Muslims in the world and Islam is growing day by day. But the standard narrative has holes. And we are not proud of that. And we're not proud of that. 
apostates are everywhere. They are among us. They are even people. I don't know why even uh, opposite prophet he is putting the voice of a transgender. You know. Of that. And we're not proud of that. Okay. Apostates are everywhere. They are among us. They are even people who memorize the Quran. They are prophets of the Quran. The youth are full of doubts. Our youth are full of doubts. And we tell them doubts. What doubts, man? Doubts. What doubts, man? Have some guts, be a man. Have some guts, be a man. But nobody is answering their questions. And nobody's answering their questions. We tell them to stop questioning and to stop being emotional. And we tell them to be a Chad. Be a Chad. You can do it. I believe in you. But instead, they choose to be bad. We've seen this happen, unfortunately. We've seen this happen to a lot of people. If it continues like this, your child is going to become an apostate. Your, your child is going to become an apostate. Blah, 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 Imagine, blah, blah, blah. your child, your child. You know, when Mimi Hijab, he speak fast, he sound like a turkey. <laughs> one more time, please, one more time. What? Your child is going to become an apostate. Imagine your child, your child, the child that you are raising could end up with the disbelievers, with the kuffar, and go to hellfire. Hellfire will want to swallow them! Hellfire will roast them. Roast them! Toast them. Toast them! Break them. Break them! Shake them. Shake them! Hellfire. Hellfire! Will annihilate them. Will annihilate them! And the rest of us will be watching. Will be watching. Brothers and sisters, we must act now. We must do something about this. And what you can do is to donate to our channel so that we can... Exactly. Let me show you. Uh, today I have a special, uh, you know, in the uh, special message in the top. I don't know if you notice uh, here. <clears throat> uh, usually I don't do that, but I decide today that today the Muslims, uh, they should support uh, what I do. Muslims, if you would like to support Christian friends and make donation, may Allah bless you, uh, go to Patreon. And for sure, I'm sure a lot of Muslims, they would love to support me because they come here on a stop they laugh a lot you know i i help uh, reducing their you know health risk uh, you know issues uh, i get many people out of depression especially muslims uh, they die laughing here and they cry too not only they cry when they are praying they cry in my program so i mean there is many reason for muslims to donate for me in fact i'm saving you and saving your children uh, you know from many things you know like you know islam is really uh, very very uh, you know, amazing religion. Yeah, we have to say it. You know. So, who is a Muslim? Want to tell us if there is anything really can make you cry in the Quran? If we open any page in the Quran, we will find that it is the most laughable, any stupid, any Okay, I will skip the word stuttable stut, stop able <laughs> just forget just forget <laughs> will you let me open the dictionary i will use different is easier word so guys now we go back to the situation here because we did not finish this movie the guy he fought non-stop and he tried to ignore it and the situation getting really tense so the smell is all over the studio he tried to fight it by ignoring it but then it kept on coming and coming and coming. Every time he stood up to pray, something came out, whether silent or loud. So he knows, once did a lot of things in order to try to counteract this. Uh -huh. But why you didn't tell us what he did exactly? He did a lot of things to contract this. There is like a trick to stop uh, farting. And what? Uh, why you don't teach us life on air? All they fail. He wants to fight this. So what? Sh what should he do? <laughs> and how can he fix this? This before it goes worse. Now here, you notice why we need the shakes. They are very expert in farting. She called the right person, the right time, right place. He is a shake. Look at this beard. Do you think this beard will grow for nothing? This is all gas. So now we call TV station, costing millions of dollars, and now we have a series of questions. When Muslims, they pray, they fart a lot. What we should do? 
you know, there is a Muslim, uh, you know, uh, he's my cousin, actually. He's an Arab. His name is, they call him Shakespeare. But in fact, his real name is Sheikh, is Sheikh Isper. Sheikh Isper, he wrote in his book, to fart or not to fart, that is the question. No comment. Okay, continue, Mr. Fart Expert, what he should do. First of all, it is mandatory upon men to pray in the masjid. Uh -huh. Now, you cannot pray in the masjid unless you have wudu. You're in the state of purity. Ooh. If this person, whenever he stands to pray in the masjid, mm -hmm. passes wind and he knows that this happens only when he's in the masjid. It happened only when he is in the masjid. I mean, isn't it obvious Shaitan doing that? He's a victim. And here the question is, why Shaitan he chose only this guy? Sheikh, be honest with me. Do you suffer from farting when you pray? While if he prays home, this doesn't happen, there's something wrong. Usually people can suppress this and stop it from coming out. Really? Especially for these few moments during prayer oh boy hypothetically hmm. if a person during the first 15 minutes of the time of the prayer uh -huh. after that then nothing comes out and when he stands to pray he st starts to pass wind mm, are you sure when he stands not when he bend over and he cannot control it if he goes and perform wudu and come back the wind still comes out and if he leaves the masjid, he stops. In this case, he's exempted from praying in the masjid and he should pray home. But as I said, this is not logical or normal. There is something wrong happening here, we, whether it's in his mind, in his subconscious, uh, he's imagining things. He has to do something about it and Allah knows. Allah knows best, brother. Allah knows best. Yeah, somebody tell me there is a... Uh, our brother, he's an ex-Muslim. His name Ahmed, ex-Muslim. He is in the chat. Yeah, I saw a video or two of him. Welcome, my friend. God bless you. And good to have you here. Uh, but please refrain from farting for now. <laughs> for all of you. Anyone will fart. Allah will not accept your prayer. And you know, the funny is, when you hear the Muslim speaking about how fart will be destroy your prayer you think this guy Muhammad was the very clean person let us see how Muhammad he prepared himself for ablution how Muhammad he do ablution 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 what do you do when Muhammad Muhammad come for you okay this is how Muhammad do ablution the clean so now farting is a problem but this guy literally he take do ablution with 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 sewage with 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 piss and with blood from from period and garbage and dead dogs abu sad al khudari said some people ask allah messenger whether they might perform ablution out of the will of bid'a which a will into which menstrual clothes, dead dogs, and stinking things were thrown. The prophet, he said, water is always pure and nothing defiled and not defiled by anything. So how water, which is always stay water, even if you have shit in it, excuse my language, fart in it, Dead dogs, women blood from their private part, their vagina. All of this will not, will be a problem. But the fart is a problem. Muslims. Muhammad himself, he jumped in a water is not even to the height of his testicles. As the hadith mentioned. And this water is dirty water, is not a well like normal well, the one you dry you drink from. 
this is a this is collected water this is used to be well one day and now it's a dry well collected water from rain from houses sewage sewage you know like in the old day the village there's a lower spot in the in the town and women they wash the dishes behind the door of the village of the house uh, and there's like a little hole behind the door actually until now in many uh, houses in the Middle East they have that you know uh, uh, maybe you now most of them they have sink and they have kitchen but all oh, days not like that so they wash dishes behind the door and then the water come out and there is a like a like a a, 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 a tunnel uh, in the side of the houses go all the way to the lower point of the town and the dirty water will be collected there this is exactly what Muhammad is washing so how fart is a big problem for the prayer and this is not a problem another thing dogs used to go and piss inside the mosque And Muslims, they never clean the piss of the dogs. Never. As you see, this is Sahir Bukhari. This is Sahir Bukhari. They cannot say this is the Eve and the game, you know, they play. So what kind of mosque we are talking about and what is the smell of the mosque? Dogs, they go inside the mosque they lift their leg as usual and they piss in the mosque and the Muslims never ever clean the mosque after the dogs pissing then we need to ask ourselves what the point then of speaking about how far can destroy your prayer You know, when you hear those people, you think that we are talking about a very clean man. He told them abolition. This abolition is something came from the Jews. Muslims don't have abolition. What abolition? He learned everything from the Jews. Since Muhammad, he went and he lived in Yathrib, he started learning from the Jews. But obviously, Muhammad, he got it wrong. You cannot claim to be a prophet. You know, what Jesus he did just because people, they are sitting and buying in the outer skirt of the temple, not in the temple, not even in the yard of the temple. The temple have many yards. In the outer skirt, outside, they have tables, selling birds, food, chickens. What Jesus did? He flipped their tables and he said to them, you made the house of my father a bazaar. They are not pissing there. If Muhammad is a person who is jealous for the house of God, how he allow even a man to stand in the mosque, he went inside the mosque, a Bedouin man, he unzip and he grab his penis and he start pissing. The Muslim, they wanted to stop him. Muhammad told them, no, let him finish it. Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? Can Ahmed chat with you? Uh, yeah, yeah, he can call me. Uh, my Skype is in the info of the of my page. You can copy it and the admin can post it for you. And just find me in Skype and contact me. You're yeah, welcome. Do we have any Muslim would like to tell us why you Muslims cry? Do you cry because of a verse like this as an example? Let me show you a verse as an example. I mean, any chapter in the Quran will make you cry from laughing. 
any any chapter even the one they speak about Jesus even the one they speak about Mary like as an example here yesterday we were talking about Mary suddenly she became a nun she was a nun brother and Mary she sat inside the mihrab the holy chamber of the temple which women are not allowed to go there and Mary she don't see anybody all her life since she was a child and Mary God he gave her food non-stop <laughs> all right our friend uh, Ahmed is uh, trying to contact me let us call him Maybe, maybe he can tell me why Muslims they cry because he's an ex-Muslim. I'm not. <laughs> we'll try to find out. All right, I'm trying to call you, but looks like your internet is not good. Let me try again. Maybe you can switch your connection. Okay, now it's working. <laughs> Hello? Hello, brother. God bless you. Hey, Ahmed. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing I'm doing well, brother. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you, you too. I'm surprised you are, not, you are not crying because the Quran should make you cry. <laughs> Shouldn't you be crying by now? <laughs> I would like to cry with my uh, beloved sister in a humanity Muslim. Oh, okay. <laughs> like Prophet Muhammad. Because I'm a Prophet ex Muslim too. Yeah. God bless you, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to add a small point uh, according to uh, the, the wudu and uh, we're talking about the brother. Uh, you know, brother, uh, only one he teaching Muhammad to do wudu is Jibreel. Yeah. So Muhammad, he, he proved it to everybody. Jibreel has a private part. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> this is a authentic hadith. Let me uh, share with you the hadith. No, no, I, I know, I know the hadith, but I never thought about it this yeah. way. You, 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 you know, you, you are right. You know, actually, I, I, I never thought about it this way, uh, because how he can teach him the wudu if he don't have a penis too? You know. Yes. Because yes. You, you know what wudu <laughs> is. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because so the hadith by way of Zayd ibn Haritha, uh -huh. so authentic hadith, you can find it in Sahih al Jami. Yeah, yeah. Authentic hadith, the Muslim cannot deny it. But here, the question is when Jibreel he brings some a water and he he teaching Muhammad to do wudu, did Jibreel he, he wash his private part too? <laughs> because, <laughs> because in Shia books, in Shia books, Allah he has a male organ. Yeah. They cannot deny that. Yeah. So now in Sunnah too, Jibril has a private part because Jibril he came to the Maryam bin to Amran. Right. In chapter 19, verse 17, 17 he yeah. came as a perfect human being and he told her, I came to give you pure son. So when Allah said a perfect human being, which means his private part is working perfect. Yeah. Right? This is a, this is reported by Ibn, reported by Ibn Ishaq, you know. Yes. Uh, you know, it says that uh, when he was in Mecca, uh, Jibreel, he came to him and uh, he like he, he pointed for him and uh, uh, in the in the side of the valley and then a spring of water open and uh, Jibreel, he started doing ablution and Muhammad, he used to look at him and he do as, as Jibreel does. <laughs> yes. So always in Arabic, in Arabic language, we ask the Muslim. So how does Jibril, if he doesn't have a male organ, sorry about that, brother. No if he problem. doesn't have it, how how Jibril teaching Muhammad to wash his private part if he doesn't have it? Yeah. Is Jibril touching teach uh, touched Muhammad private part? Yeah, and then the fun and then the funny Muhammad he went home and he started teaching Khadija. <laughs> <laughs> this religion is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, bro. So I, I just suggest every brothers and sisters in the humanity, Muslim people, please, brother and sister, when you are watching a brother Christian Prince or watching another brother he knows 
about Islam. Take the hadith, take the source, and go do your own research. I guarantee for you, like a sheikh in Arabic speakers, he said, only however those who have a knowledge, they're lifting Islam. Because we, we, we scared about you, brothers and sisters. The day of judgment, you will go to the hellfire with Allahu Akbar. Absolutely, because Allah in a hellfire. So I don't want to take uh, your time, brother. Yeah. I'm so glad to talk to you. Yeah, I'm welcome. so proud of you. Thank Keep you. Keep going. God bless you, brother. I'm happy for you that you left Islam and good for you, my friend. I hope many people will uh, will leave too and they will see the truth through you using used by, by the Lord, the Messiah. And we pray for you and your family to be saved, uh, to be safe and to be saved from any harm. Amen, brother. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. all the brother and sister. Feel free, Amen, to, brother. feel free to call me anytime. You're welcome. Absolutely, brother. All right. I will proud for, to call you. God You're welcome. Bless you. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. <clears throat> yeah, actually, you know, I I, uh, I I never thought about what he said. I posted the reference for you. This is exist. Uh, let us show you the... This is, here we go, this is the Islamic Library. Al-Maktab al islamiya There's many books, you know, anyway, they are reporting the Hadith. And this is volume number two, uh, page number 297. And uh, I will use uh, Google Translation. The name of the chapter, in fact, it's how Jibreel, he taught Muhammad how to do abolition. So here it says, uh, uh, mentioned that when he finished abolition, he pure the whole for, uh, yeah, the translation uh, cut uh, a part of Jibreel. Where's Jibreel? Okay, where is Jibreel? Yeah, for some reason, uh, the Arabic is eaten by the translation. So Jibreel, he came to uh, Muhammad and he started teaching him how to do abolition. And Muhammad, he was looking at Jibreel. Uh, you see here, it says Aqil. Uh, let us go back to the Arabic first to see what happened here. Uh, let us use this one here, let us see. Translate. Jibreel teaching the messenger, may Allah bless him and grant him, pray on him and salute him, blah, blah, blah. The, the, the abolition, you see? So who is the one who taught Jibreel? Uh, taught Muhammad is Jibreel. But what our brother Ahmad, he mentioned, very, very, very good point. If Muhammad is looking at Jibreel, to learn how to do abolition, then Jibreel he have to do the same as any Muslim today, because we are learning from him. As you see, he did not even tell him how to do it. He look, he look at uh, he look at Jibreel, and he do as he does. He look at him, and he do as he see. It says here. He was looking. Uh, to show him how to purify himself for prayer. So Muhammad was looking at Jibreel so he can learn how he can practice abolition. And now after Muhammad looked at Jibreel, Jibreel did not say do this and do that. No, he just practiced and Muhammad, he just followed. And Muhammad did that. And this is another uh, you know, additional stupid story. Uh, it doesn't make any sense, you know. Uh, and then if abolition is something important in Islam, then we find Muhammad jumping in water, which is very filthy, very dirty, very... It's a sewage, literally a sewage. So what the, what the point? Dogs, they piss inside the mosque, we don't clean. You can, you can imagine how dirty the mosque is. Even Muhammad, he used to clean the snots and the boogers from the walls of the Kaaba. Men, they go inside the Kaaba, they piss. And now the Muslims are crying about somebody farting in the mosque. Claiming that farting is a reason to defile your prayer. 
link for the reference I posted already here we go we post it again do we have any Muslim would like to join us live on air any Mohammedan mayday mayday how do you do I want to cry right now with you what about we play some uh, Quran <clears throat> and see how we cry together you know I cried for many reasons when I talk about Islam uh, I can amongst those. No. I, I can show you some examples you know why I cry when I talk about Islam you know now if we look at Adam alayhi salam he came down onto the earth he was sent to the earth there's a question where did he land where he was he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed meaning he dropped but Allah placed him on the earth uh -huh. this we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind oh boy he came down in what is known as the Indo Pax subcontinent oh boy precisely Sri Lanka and you know and I was you know and my dad he says to me why you drink too much tea I mean, isn't it obvious? Originally, you are coming from Sri Lanka. If our grand, 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 grandfather, Mr. Adam, he was from Sri Lanka. Why you are surprised? So Adam landed where? Where, where? Phil Hind. He came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. A Muslim asking me, what do you do when Gog and Magog break through your floor? <laughs> Guys, things is getting complicated. A Muslim saying to me, unexpected the challenge. What do you do? What do you do when Gog and Magog break through your floor? Gog and Magog. Coming through my floor, not even from the door. I start looking for the hammer of Thor. Or maybe I should read Quran, the verse of the back door. What you will do when they come through your floor. Chapter Come Break Through Your Floor, chapter number 115, made by Christian Prince. I mean, you idiot. Gog and Magog, I mean, this is other reasons to, to, to cry laughing at the Quran. Gog and Magog. Are you sure? Let us see, somebody trying to call me. Muslims only, okay? Let us see, this guy is so excited to call. <clears throat> he declined my call. He is calling me, he declined my call. I will call you one more time. If you don't answer, I will, I will block you. Let us see. If you are a Mohammedan and you are so proud about your religion, feel free to call me. I will be happy to have you. Hello? Hello? Yes, yeah, speak. Go ahead. Yeah, I hear you. Go ahead. What I'm talking about? What? Why are you talking bad about Islam? 
uh, we are talking about Gog and Magog, not about Islam. Gog and Magog? Yeah. What's up with them? What, what do you want to tell me about Gog and Magog? Well, I mean, what can I say about Gog and Magog? Yeah, you tell me. You're the Muslim, you know. Tell me about Gog and Magog. What is that? I'm sure, like, they, I don't know. I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'm sure, like, they come out of nowhere, haven't they? Well, what? What? Gog and Magog. Yeah, what Gog and Magog? A Muslim, he told me, uh, as you see in the screen, a Muslim, he says to me, aren't you afraid that Gog and Magog break through your floor? So I don't know, uh, Fakira, if what the, what is that? Hello? Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, hello. hello I don't hear you. I, I, are you using Gog and Magog phone? Can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. What is Gog and Magog? I don't know. You tell me. So, what do you know then? Gog and Magog. Where's that mentioned? Is it mentioned in the Quran anyway? Yeah, you know, I mentioned in the Quran. Don't you know? No, show me the verse. Okay, the verse in the Quran, in Gog and Magog. This is in chapter number uh, 207. Hello? Hello, hello. How many how many chapters you have in your Quran? Do you have 114 or you have 207? Is it 114? Uh sound like you have a wrong Quran. Okay, I will give you the correct Quran. In chapter 18, verse number 94, it says uh, that there is a guy, his name the guy with the two horn, and uh, they told him about people there they are not a human, they are Gog and Magog, and they do bad stuff. And then uh, uh, Allah, he commanded uh, Zulkarnain to build a dam between us and them. What do you think about this story? Well, I'm not really sure to be honest. Let me have a look at your screen. Give me a second. Okay. So he's talking about Gog and Magog. Well, thank you very much. I mean, how many times we have to repeat saying, yeah, Gog and Magog. So what about him? What's your point? Okay, well, it says here that uh, Zulkarnain, which is Alexander the Great, he built a dam between us and them, and this dam is made from iron and copper. And, yeah, so and they can't get out. Huh? So they can't get out? Exactly. But yes. those are very big in number to the point your prophet says they are 1,000 to 1, which means if one human exists, there's 1,000 of them. And each one of them, before he die, he make 1,000 baby. So now they have to be by trillions or not even trillions, way more. So how come we cannot find, we cannot find the dam, neither we can find the Sagog and Mago? Well, they've, they've hidden some, they're hidden some, aren't they? Why they are hidden? It says here they are behind the dam. They are not hidden. Behind the dam? Yeah, behind the dam. He built a dam, made it from. It, is, it doesn't say anywhere dam. Where does it say dam? It says, it says here's an Arabic, it even says the Arabic word, saddan. Saddan means dam. Oh, so have they replaced that with barrier? Huh? Yeah, the barrier. The barrier is a dam. Is a dam, yeah. So, so there's a dam. Mm. They're, they're behind that dam and they can't get right. Past it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean that's it, isn't it. Where it is, we have we have a we have Google Map for every inch in the world. We can see right now in camera any island, any place in the world. You know, we can zoom in. We can see even the house of a rabbit. Where is this dam, which is made from iron, and there's a trillions of creatures behind it, and they are very evil. Uh, and they will attack us one day. Like, like I said, they've hidden somewhere. We don't know the location. Well, you are making things up. Where it says it's hidden. 
if if it, if Alexander the, if Alexander the Great he found them, how they are hidden? In fact, I will help you. Alexander the Great he found those people next where the sun rise. If you go verse nine verse nineteen, it says, when he came the rising place of the sun, the rising place of the sun. Do you know where the sun rise? Do you know the place? What they call it? No. What, what what is the name of the country where the sun rises, according to your understanding? Well, where the sun rises. Where the sun rises, yeah. Because he found where the sun set, the sitting place of the sun, and he found where the sun well, rises. What are you talking about? Well, I'll be watching a couple of your videos, and there's one talking about murky water or something like that. No, forget about the murky water. The murky water isn't clean now because we are we, we install install the filter. But now we are talking about that when he arrived where the sun rise in place. He found, found it rising on people who Allah provided them with no shelter. So they are not hiding. They are those people, are, they have no shelter. There's no shelter there. And then those people, they said to him, when, after he uh, keep walking a little bit, he found, he arrived to an area between two mountains, two dam actually. And then people who, you know, hardly they understand the word, they said to him, Zul Qurnayn, can you build for us a dam between us and Gog and Magog? They are doing mischief, man. I mean, so what's your point then? Okay, I I, I wanna I wanna walk with you step by step. You know, you sound like intelligent person and educated. It says here, a people who they securely, scarcely, they can understand the word. Right. Okay, how those people they can't understand the word, which means they are foolish, they are idiot, they are stupid, and then they are giving him a map of engineering how to build a dam, and they are telling him build a dam for us. How hard did they understand the word? And then suddenly they are speaking about a very clever idea to build a dam between us and those Gog and Magog. I don't really know, you know. Okay. You know, there's an Arabian movie, I don't know if you watch it, like there's a guy who go in villages and he gave people a bell to make them intelligent. Obviously those people, they took some of those bills and suddenly they became smart. And now the question is still is exist that where is Gog and Magog and how come we cannot find it? And those people after he built the dam, they will keep digging in the, in the dam until the day of judgment and this dam as you see in verse number 96 it says this dam is built from iron and copper right. okay and then one day one day they will be able to open a hole on the wall and that will be happening in the judgment day they will keep digging every day every day but they cannot because each I'm time sure said that, huh? i'm sure you said that they wipe uh, the third of mankind or something sorry what yeah, what? I'm sure it said that they'll wipe they'll wipe third of mankind. They will what? They will like kill kill the third of mankind, like one third of the mankind. Like yeah, yeah, they are very powerful. Even your prophet, he says they will drink like by just walking by the lake of Tabaraya, they will drink it all. The Sea of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee. I mean, do you see how he used this uh, this water? They will drink it all. Just one, like just walking by it. Like imagine how big the number is. Did you watch the movie like the the uh, the, the 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 Lord the Lord of the Ring, the King of the Lord the, the Ring, whatever they call it? No, nah, I've heard of it. So what are you saying is a false statement? I'm saying this is for me. This is laughable. For you, it's what? Can you take this story serious? What they've hid, they're hidden somewhere you know, where it's like covered by iron. They, they can't get through it until the day of judgment. How they are hidden, it, they are just behind the dam. They are not under the dam. The Quran is so clear. Isn't it the Quran says we made it a clear book? And even your prophet, he explained, he says they are behind the dam. They keep digging every day by night when they leave. They go in the morning, they come back. Allah, he closed the hole. Why? Because they forgot to say, inshallah, they keep doing this until one day in the day of judgment, their boss, he will say, Inshallah, at the end of the day, tomorrow we will come back to dig, 
and then Allah will not fix the hole which they made it through the whole day and now because they are saying inshallah they will be able to dig bigger hole and go through yeah but eventually one day they'll they'll get through won't they yeah but the question is where are they no one knows why no one knows as you see those people knows those people they met them they have a problem with them they are people like us and Alexander the Great is somebody is very well known. Well, so Alexander the Great, he, he met with them. Well, as you see, he built a dam between us and them. Yes, yeah, so he built it in a place where no one, nobody knows where it is. Where your prophet he get his story from? Why do you go asking yourself? Where is getting the story from? I mean, how we can 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 we can trust Muhammad that he is telling us a true story? All right. So your question is, where are they? Where are they? Where is the dam? And if there is a dam made from iron, you know, we are talking about from the time of Alexander the Great. We are talking about thousands of years ago. That means this dam cannot be exist for so the whole story. Is a lie because uh, you know iron will rust. Iron will not even if you build the biggest dam ever will not even live fifty years. So what are you saying that there's no Gog and Magog? You tell me. So do you think they are exist? If if they, are, if they are exist, if they are exist, we should be able to find the dam. And as long as the dam is made from iron, and we know that iron will rust, do you agree with me that iron rust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we are talking about what? We are talking about thousands of years, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you think really iron will stay for thousands of years? Be honest with me. I don't think so. I don't think so. Exactly. So now, if if the iron is demolished, then Gog and Magog should be free. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You were saying that uh, I was watching a recent video. You were saying that um, that he got it from a like a fiction book. Yeah, the the story of Zulkarnain is written by a person. He is from Syria. He wrote many books. Very famous person. He used real names, but in a fiction story, like now, you know, there is many real names, but uh, in in a movie, they bring a person. He is a real person, and they make a fiction movie about the person. Like, you know, Hercules. Hercules is a real person, but there's tons of his stories are false. Uh, you know, they make stories, movies about a person who was exist in history. Alexander the Great is a real person, but those stories are fictions about him. So you're saying they were made up stories? What do you, what do you think? You tell me. Because uh, you agreed with me. If the dam is a, tr is a true exist at that time, by now, the dam should be destroyed by the element of weather. And that's mean Gog and Magog should be free, should be swarming the earth, and should be the, the end of the time. So Muhammad, he made now a false prophecy, prophesying that when Gog and Magog, they will be set free, that will be the judgment day, that's it. But the dam is, you know, if it ever exists, it's not exist no more. So judgment day should happen a long time ago. Yeah, man, I don't have anything to say to that. You got a point. So what do you think, my friend? Do you think Islam is valid for you? I don't know, man. It's not enough to prove. But isn't it this is enough to prove Islam to be false? It's a silly story. You know, uh, and a smart, intelligent man like you, 2023, you know, you believe in, in such a thing which doesn't make any sense? I mean, is there another story in the Quran that's false? All the Quran is false. Let us do this, me and you. All right, go Can on. you choose for me a chapter you think there's nothing false in it? There's, a, there's 114 chapters in the Quran, correct? Yep. Okay, choose one you think, the one... I cannot find a mistake in it. And we will see. Choose, you choose.
over the chapter of Mary. Chapter of Mary. All of it is a mistake, actually. Chapter 19. All right. Start with me, verse number one. Tell me, what is that? For Kahayas. Kahayas, what is that? There's no meaning. There's no meaning in the translation. Exactly. This is why I say Muslim they cry when they cry reciting the Quran. They cry for something they don't understand, and it doesn't mean mean anything. So why they are crying? Why a Muslim in front of the camera he starts me? You know, like okay, Kahayas, what I cause me? Okay, why are you are crying, man? What is this? So you are a Muslim. You open the Quran. The first verse is a joke. And then the Muslims, they explain, they say, these letters are miracles. How they are letters and they are miracles. Those letters are existing in Arabic before Islam is exist. So now if I say S-O-M-E, it's a miracle? Laughable. And then suddenly it says, this is the mention of the mercy of your Lord unto his slave Zechariah. Okay, who is Zechariah? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Who is Zachariah? I don't know. Exactly. I, don't know I do not know who Zachariah. Is. I don't know too yeah. because now this is laughable. Now, so you see, when you are writing a book, let us say you are an author of a novel, and you are uh, making a story, telling a story. Shouldn't you introduce the character you are talking about? Z suddenly, Zachariah. Okay, who is this guy, Zachariah? Nobody knows. Who is his father? Nobody knows. Then we continue, okay, that he's a slave, Zechariah. Okay, Zechariah, he called his God. Uh, okay, Zechariah, he have a gray hair. Thank you, Zechariah, I have a gray hair. And uh, I'm getting old, okay. And now, uh, uh, my my wife, she cannot have babies. She is old and she cannot, uh, she is a potent uh, woman. She cannot have baby, okay. Uh, give me a baby. Okay, now, now Zechariah remember to give a baby when his wife, she is uh, very old. I mean, why he did All not right, pray? Sweet. Why he did not pray to his Lord before when he was young, when he was 30, 40, his wife, you know. But anyway, the story, the drama. So a person to inherit me. Okay. And then Allah, he said to Zechariah, Verily, we give you a glad tiding of a son. His name will be Yahya John. Go back with me. It says here what? Because he want this person to inherit him, correct? Yep. But John got killed. This is John the Baptist. So he could not inherit him. What is it? The, the chapter 6? You know, chapter 19, verse Chapter six. 19, verse number 6 and 7. We are reading. Right, okay. Hmm. So now what is the promise? He wanted a, per, a baby, a child who will inherit, correct? Which yep. means he will provide babies more and the lineage will continue. But this person died and he did not have the babies. So the promise was false and the gift does not work the way it was meant to be. Then Allah, he told him, okay, I'm going to give you a baby. He said, how I'm going to have that? I mean, do you see the stupidity? He just asked Allah to make his wife have a baby. And now Allah said to him, you will have a baby. And now he's asking Allah, but how my wife, she would have a baby. <laughs> Aren't you the one who just asked him? <laughs> Saying to him, let my wife have a baby. So, you just made a prayer. If you read the verse before it, he says, you know, my wife, she is a potent. You know, she's a baron. So give me from yourself a higher. Okay. So now he knew his wife can't have a baby. And now he prayed to Allah to give him a baby. And then Allah said, okay, we will give you a good news. We will give you a baby. And then the guy, he says to him, Zechariah said to Allah, but how Allah, how she will have a baby, but she don't uh, cannot have babies? Like, what the heck? 
Is he questioning the ability of Allah? Isn't it Allah supposed to is God? Do this guy like Araya knew that Allah is God? Or he think he's just a doctor? Are you with me? I'm not this woman. Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. And then the story continue. Uh, Allah told him, it's easy, very easy for me. <laughs> I have created you before. <laughs> And then Zechariah, he says, my Lord, appoint to me a sign. Zechariah don't believe Allah. Here we go, drama. Allah talking to Zechariah and still Zechariah, he don't believe it. Are you kidding me? Give me a sign. So Allah, he told Zechariah, okay, you know what? You will go mute for three days. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Why three days? But it says your sign is that you shall not speak unto for three days. Yeah, why? If I now, if you say to me, Christian Prince, make your Jesus make me mute for five minutes, and then Jesus he made you mute for five minutes, isn't it? This is enough. You try to speak, you could not. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what you mean. You try to talk for five minutes, you try hard to open your mouth, but you cannot. That is enough. Three days, why three days? Is that, a tr is, that, is that in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? The, 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 is that from Christianity, the Trinity? The power of the Trinity? It's not really talking about the Trinity, is it? Well, are you telling me why three days? Why Muslims stuck with the three days? When you do evolution, you have to wipe your hands, your face, your fingers, your ears, three times, three times, three times, three times, three times. When you say Shahada, you have to say it three times. You take an oath, you have to say it three times. If you divorce your wife, you divorce three times. Uh, Mary, Allah, make her fa fast from talking too for three days. Everything in Islam is three days. Why? Yeah, but that's got nothing to do with the Trinity, though, has it? My friend, I'm showing you how stupid that you know you you chose for me, you chose for me a chapter. You say show me mistakes. We we, we just started. We are in verse number ten, right? Yeah, yeah. And then if we continue the story, uh, you will see uh, uh, something very very funny. That this guy who his father prayed to Allah to make him inherit. He became a prophet. But this is what, not what the, what the Zechariah he asked for. He wanted somebody to inherit. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah I'm with you. I'm just reading on the screen. Right? And then suddenly, Mary, in verse number 16, uh, she hide herself. Why, Mary, she hide herself? She was wanted by the FBI. Who is Mary, first of all? The mother of Jesus. Now, how we know who is this Mary, that this is the mother of Jesus? Suddenly, he says, and, and, and mention in the book, Maryam. Okay, who is Maryam? I've already told you that. Where you learn this from? Well, isn't it clear that Mary is the mother of Jesus? No problem, but Jesus. I'm asking you now, if you are writing a book for me, shouldn't you mention who is this new character who appeared in the book before you mention it? Who is Mary? Yeah, but does it not, does it not say like uh, in the verses after that, that there's a word coming down to you? It doesn't matter still who is Mary. I will help you. If you go to chapter 3, it says Mary, the daughter of Amron. Is that correct? And who is Amron? You tell me. <laughs> Amron is the father of Moses. <laughs> so how the father of Moses became the father of Mary? And the same story in all the chapters speaking about Jesus is to start with letters. 
Alif Lam Mim. What does that mean? You, do, you will tell me I do not know. Okay. And now Alif here it says Ali Umran Ali. Ali. Do you know Arabic? No, no, I don't know. Al, Al, in Arabic, it's not an Arabic word actually, this is an Aramaic word, mean family of. Family of. So, right. Ali Amran, the family of Amran. Okay, so the chapter here is speaking about only the family of Amran. So, anyone in the chapter, he should be from the family of Amran. How yeah. Moses is from the family, how Mary from the family of Amran. How Imran, the father of Moses, become the grandfather of Jesus. I'm not sure. Do you know when it says that? Um, obviously, that we agree with the Bible and the, the Torah. Now, friend, all your story are stolen from somewhere. We know that. But Muhammad, he adds some, you know, spice and stuff to it, and that will make it funny. So you say Muhammad himself was the author of the Quran? Uh, I don't think so. I think uh, I think Muhammad he made all his author of nothing. I think I think but Muhammad. Illiterate though. No, you see, I don't believe that Muhammad is illiterate because I don't think Muhammad is a real person in the in the you know. But I don't argue about that because there is no point. But there is no proof that Muhammad is exist. No proof. Like now, if you open the Quran, you mention to me the name Muhammad, right? Yeah. There is in the Quran chapter is called chapter of Muhammad, but nowhere in the Quran it says Muhammad is who. Who is Muhammad? But it's the well. It's when. When you say the Shahada that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. No, no problem, no problem. You see, okay, Shaykh is a messenger. Who is Muhammad best? You know, so, so when you say to me, the Quran mentioned the name of Muhammad, mentioned uh, uh, only five times in the Quran. Okay, who is Muhammad? You don't know. Who is his father? You do not know. In the Quran it says, Mary, the sister of Aaron, Isa, the son of Maryam. Correct? Yeah. Okay, Suleiman, the son of etc. So, how come Muhammad is in the Quran have unknown father? Who is the father of Muhammad? No, but I'm I'm sure his father I'm sure his father died. How you can be sure? There's no there is nowhere in the Quran. So now we have to go and read what Muslim they call it hadith. But the second we show the hadith, the Muslim they say the hadith is full of lies. Do, do, did you hear Muslim before? And you are a Muslim. Muslim saying there's a lot of hadith are fabricated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they okay. Say that the so how we can trust? How we can trust the origin of Muhammad from the hadith? I mean, only if the sahih, then it's all right. Okay. Do you accept the sahih hadith? Yeah. All right. Muhammad was a prophet, correct? Yeah. And what does that mean when you say a prophet? Someone sent from God. Okay. Isa in Islam was a prophet, correct? Yeah. Was Isa sick? Was Isa sick? What do you mean? Like, you know, he gets sick, he vomit, he... No, no. No. Is it true that Isa, he used to heal people? Yeah, he was healing the blind, healing the leper, yeah. Okay. If Muhammad is a prophet of Allah, and according to Muslims, and you are a Muslim, claim that Muhammad is the most close person and favorite to Allah, correct? Well, yeah, you could say that, yeah. All right. So how you explain to me this story? I will show you something in the screen. Yeah. This is your prophet. The Messenger of Allah. Can you see my screen now? No, I can't see you now. I can't see you now. Just give it a couple of seconds. Mute YouTube, please, so you don't have double voice. Me, I will read until it appears to you in your side. The Messenger of Allah fainted when he was sick. Then he woke up. He said, has the time for a prayer came come 
They said yes. He said, "Tell Bilal to call uh, 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 to call for to the prayer to the adhan, the prayer, and tell Abu Bakr to lead the people for the prayer." Then he fainted. Okay. Then he woke up, and then he said, "Has the time for the prayer come?" They said yes. He said, "Tell Bilal to call to Adan and tell Abu Bakr to lead the people for prayer." Then he fainted. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay. And then he woke up, and then he says, "How is the time for the prayer come?" They said yes. He said. Tell Pilal to call for the Adan and tell Abu Bakr to lead the people for prayer. Aisha, she cannot take it no more. She said, my father is a tender hearted man. He is weak. If he stand on that place, he will weep and will not be able to do it. If you told someone else to do it, which means to lead the prayer, then he fainted again. Then he woke up. Then he said, tell Bilal to call Adan and tell Abu Bakr to lead the prayer. Are you with me, my friend? Yeah, I'm with you. I hope you are not fainted too. So, <laughs> no, I'm all right. Muhammad is a prophet of Allah. And Jesus is a prophet of Allah. Why Jesus, if people touch his even clothing, they get healed. Just touch his clothes. He made the blind see. He resurrected people from death. He tell you what you hide in your houses. He created from the mother bird, as the Quran says. Why Jesus can do all those things which only God can do? Yet Muhammad, the faint the prophet, he cannot heal himself, and Allah cannot heal him. You got, you got, you got a good point. Do you know the guy, his name is Ahmad, Ahmad Mirza Ghulam? No, I've never heard of him. What about him? Ahmad Mirza is a false messiah. He claimed in India that he is the messiah. Yep. And then yep. Ahmad Mirza, when he claimed to be the messiah, 20, 30 Christians, they come to his house and they brought him a lot of people who they are blind, people they are sick, people cannot walk. And they said to him, well, if you are the Messiah, well, do what the Messiah does. Heal them. The coward, he closed his door and he hide inside because simply he is a scam. Do you agree with me? He must be a scam. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not well, if Muhammad is sent by the, mess, the Messiah God, as the Muslim they claim that Allah is his God, and he is the same God for the Messiah, then Muhammad should have what the Messiah have. He should not be fainted. He should not be vomiting. Ahmad Mirza died over his pupu. He had a diarrhea. He was infected with cholera. And he had unlimited diarrhea. And then when he fell down, he fell in the top of his poop. Muhammad, the last thing he did before he died, he pissed. The last thing he said to his wife, give me the container and he pissed in it. And then he died. So how we can explain that all the cult leaders they cannot heal themselves, but they claim to be healers. They cannot save themselves, but they claim to be saviors. They cannot have a normal life. But Jesus, according to Islam, is right now in heaven. Nobody can kill him. No Jews, no Roman. Nobody can touch him. And look how Muhammad is dying. What do you think? It's a bit confusing because uh, I was going, well, I was uh, going through a verse in the Quran uh, where it says, Abba mm -hmm. uh, where it says uh, that the blind man came to him, but but what, what, what do you do? I don't understand. Well, 
Yeah. I haven't opened the interpretation of that verse. Well, there's no interpretation. He just, uh, the verse is so clear. He says, uh, you know, he gave him a face. He gave him a face. He kicked him out because he's a blind and he is, we, you know, poor. You know, imagine you are blind at that time. You know, life is, is tough. I mean, blind in this time and life is tough unless you live like some countries where, you know, you have disability and salary. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But this is not everywhere. Until now, there's a lot of people who are blind. They are homeless in the street. So now this guy is a blind. He is not coming to beg for food. He is coming to ask Muhammad a question. It's just a question. What Muhammad does? According to the interpretation, Muhammad was busy with the rich people of Quraysh. And he said to himself, if I, if now they see this guy, they will see that my followers are nothing but the lowest and the poor. How come Jesus, he have no problem to speak with the blind man and heal him and touch him? Did he touch his eyes? Who, oh, Jesus? Jesus, Jesus in the Bible, yes, he touched his eyes, right? Even he put mud yeah, in his yeah. hands. He made his hand dirty to save the man. So he made mud. He spit on the mud. He put it in his eyes. And the man, he, which means in the simple way, he created eyes from him, for him. So how come the Messiah, if the Messiah is coming from Allah, and Muhammad is coming from Allah, which one, and I want to be honest with me, which one is the one you like to follow? The one who was so nice with the blind man, and the blind man is not asking him for food or a question. He said, Lord, I want to see. The man who came to Muhammad, he's not asking Muhammad to make him see because he knew he cannot. He's just asking questions about God. So which one is the one have the ethic to be considered a person of dignity? Forget about prophet. Which one, if you see two doors in a house, there's two doors. Two doors, one a blind man knocking in the right door and one knocking at the left door. One man, he opened the door for the blind man. He says, well, how we can help you? He was so kind to him. He welcomed him. And the other one, he kicked him out. Be honest with me. Which one is the man you consider him a good man? The one who's the one who was asking him how he was and whatever like comforted him. That is Jesus, correct? Well, yeah, according to your point of view, yeah. No, according to you, I want to. According, I want to according to you. Yeah, but the well, well, Allah gave him the miracles, didn't he? What, what miracles? I mean, the guy he cannot he keep fainting. <laughs> no, I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah, no problem. But Jesus is still can be rude to the blind man. He can be bad to the blind man. Now, actually, when you have miracles, you will become more arrogant, more proud, because you can do things nobody can do. Like, let us think about it today. There is people who they are famous, correct? All right. They have bodyguard. You cannot even touch their hand. You cannot even shake hands with them. If you get it close, the bodyguard will jump on you. This is just because they are artists. So imagine if you are the Messiah, who you ever you touch, he will be healed. How proud you will be. The Messiah the was... Of, it's the power of God, isn't it? It doesn't matter. That's mean the Messiah, he has the power of God. Still, he is so humble. He is so loving. He is so wonderful. Muhammad, you don't have the power of God. He don't have even a power over his sickness. He's so arrogant. Even when Muslims, they come to Muhammad, do you know what Muhammad he do to them? What does he do? He whipped them. He beat them. For what? For no reason. Come on, there must be some sort of reason, man. No. I will show you, even Muhammad, he says, that anyone who unjustly he is beating him and he curse him using the F word,
Allah will make it a blessing for him. Let me show you the hadith. There we go. I will wait for you on the screen. This is Sahih Muslim. This is very authentic. <clears throat> Aisha, she saw him cursing and beating two men. She said, "What they did? Do you see? Do you see that uh, the 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 screen now?" Give me about another 10 seconds. I'll come up. Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Does it say there, chapter whomsoever is cursed, revealed, or prayed against by the Prophet when he does not deserve that? Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it. So why Muhammad want to curse and beat people who don't deserve that? <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> this is even the name of the chapter. Talking about good manner. The prophet have the best manner between mankind. He beat, he curse, he say the F word to people who don't deserve that. Yet he have no power. He cannot heal. He cannot make the blind see. He cannot heal himself. He is nobody. <clears throat> Jesus, who can raise people from death, forgive sin, give eyes, make the one who cannot walk, walk. He don't do unjust. And then Muhammad, he claimed that when he curse somebody, he don't deserve it, he hang up. Maybe... <laughs> it was too much for him. <laughs> He's a nice Muslim anyway. I hope he will leave Islam soon. <laughs> Why you hang up, my friend? Why you hang up? You are afraid to leave Islam next? You will leave Islam. And Muhammad, he claimed that if he beat somebody unjustly and he curse him unjustly, Allah will give him reward. Look at this scam. I go right now in the street, start, him, start beating people. And people, they say to me, Christian Prince, you claim to be prophet of God. I say, oh, don't you know? I made condition. Have you ever heard of a prophet make condition his God? A prophet, a man. He put condition on the God. He say, hey God, listen, anyone I beat him unjustly, anyone I spit at him, anyone I whip his back, anyone I curse him, make it a blessing for him. I don't know, shall I call you back? Let's try to call him back. I feel he's close to leave Islam. Maybe this is why he decided to, to hang up. Hello? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Where do you go? I think it cut off my wife. I was a bit, you know. Yeah, it is, it is Allah, brother. <laughs> so what do you think, my friend? Can we well, consider Muhammad a, a good person for a second? Not to mention he have sex with the children. He took his own son wife. He flirted with the wife when she was married to his son. Imagine. He flirt. He flirt with the wife. Oh yeah, he came to the house, and this is written in, in your book. <laughs> this is written in your book. He went to the house, and he said yeah, to the one wife one to Zainab. One of your videos. Yeah, I see one of your videos about it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know it. So he flirted with the wife when the husband is not home. Do you think there is a decent man 
He will do this at least. Go praise, ask God for forgiveness. Says God, look what I did today. He should be crying, should be, you know. No, instead, he claimed that Allah told him, Why you hide what Allah he gave, told you to take her? He claimed it is God who told him to do that. And be honest with me. If your father would my respect to your father, or even your friend, come to your house and if flirt with your wife, what you would do? Well, I don't know, man. I, but obviously, it's, it's not a good thing to be obviously flirting with other people's wives. I know what you mean, yeah. How Muhammad can be a prophet then? What kind of a man he go? He coming to teach us how to go to heaven? Is that how we go to heaven? And then the Muslim, they, in their book, they say that those only a privilege for the Prophet if his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can F her. This is the Prophet of Ifin, my friend. He have a privilege of Ifin. Can you show me uh, the privileges of the Prophet where you brought that screen? Oh, no problem. Uh, yeah. Bring you up. Okay. Because obviously I don't speak Arabic. I'm not, I'm not Arabic. No, speaker, no problem. So. I can show you. I can give you the Arabic uh, page. You open it. Just open it, please, in Google browser. So you can use Google translation. All right. All right. Just, yeah, just send it me and I'll follow it with you. Yeah. Uh, give me a second. Here we go. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. I will give it, I will, I will post it in the chat too. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi. Volume number 14, page number 187. I guess the details is so clear, right? I mean, volume, page, we have all things we need. And this is an official Islamic website. And this is the link I'm posting it in the chat. All of you, you can open it and you can use Google Translation. And this is Tafsir al Qurtubi. And I will use Google Translation. I, I understand a little bit of Arabic, but not not as much. No not problem. Much. No problem. Have it says anything? here in number ten. Uh, let us let us see the privilege. All right. Wait, let me have a look. Okay. Can you hear me? I hear you. Give me a second. <coughs> Just to be sure the page is correct. Uh, Just to be sure that this is in the page. It should be number 10. Yeah. All right. Uh, I have a difficulty with this page is a flipping. I, I click, I will open a different website. Give me a second. No. All right. See, here we now, we have different website. The same book anyway. Is the same. Posted on the chart? The same book. Yeah, this is Tafsir Al-Qurtabi, variant number 14. Page number 212 in this print. Here in the yellow, it says, number 10. إذا وقع بصره على امرأة وجب على زوجها طلاقها وحل له نكاحها. This is a privilege number ten. Let us use Google Translation. Privilege number ten. Have you have you posted it on the chat? Yeah, I will post for you in a second because this uh, title need to be shortened. It have Arabic text. In this page, yeah, okay. Uh, link shorten. Ah, uh, here we go. You know Arabic. That's good. Very good. That will make my life easier. Yeah. 
Here we go. This is the link. I shortened the link. Oh, it's still saying long. Hold on. Uh, shorten the link. Okay, now. Okay, let's try this. Is it? Is it? Are we posting it on the chat or? Hey, give me a second. Here we go. I'm posting it now. I just posted. All right, I see it. <clears throat> All right. So we go. You can open it in Google Translation. As you see here, it says interpretation of Al Qurtubi, part number eleven, verse number eleven. Sorry, fourteen. Uh, page number two, uh, twelve, and then we go to number ten. Here you see all the privilege. All of them are filthy. All the privilege is about sex and money. But then you go to number 10, which I find the most ugly, disgusting. Number 10. Tenth. If his sight falls on a woman, her husband must divorce her, and it will be lawful for him to F her, not to marry her. What do you think about this? I'm still trying to find it on the page. All right, yeah, I see it, yeah. Number 10. Right, yeah, I see it, I see it. Hmm. What do you think about such a beautiful... Yeah. Does it not say anything about marrying? Well, the word nikah does not mean marry. This is a this is a bigger one of the lies Muslim they keep repeating. With my respect to you, you're a Muslim, but I'm, you sound like an honest man, an honest man, so I'm not accusing you of lying. But this is what the Muslim lie to each other because I will show you the proof. You want to show you the proof that nikah does not mean marriage? Nikah? Yeah, does not mean marriage. Yeah. You want me to prove to you in two seconds that nikah does not mean marriage? Two seconds. Don't prove it to me. Okay. Go on. If we go in the hadith, Muhammad he says, when your wife she have her period, do everything except nikah. <laughs> so how how nikah mean marriage? And they are married already. Those are women are married already. He is saying, do everything except nikah. Let me get you the reference. <clears throat> A second. All right. Here so we go. nikah means obviously not marriage. Uh, oh, are you tell me. Here we go. I will show you. You tell me what the conclusion. I read Arabic, but obviously. Okay. No problem. Here we go. It says here. This is Sahih Muslim. It says here in Arabic about about this is this is about the Jews. The Jews, when their wife she had her period, they don't have sex with her. So Muhammad he says. Don't listen to them. Do everything except intercourse. So what nikah is? Intercourse. <laughs> Those are their wives already. They are married. You know? I saw, uh, because I was watching one of the, your videos the other day uh, about the chapter of 33 verse 50 where it says, Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, thank you. Is a continue verb. You don't, you don't, uh, you don't continue marrying the women. You marry her once. <laughs> so he's saying yes, yes, thank you. Ha, ha means to f her. Sex. Yeah, to f her. This is the word for effing. I mean, in front of I you, know. my friend. Listen, you you said you speak Arabic. You know how you know how to read Arabic. Does it say here about women who they are your wife? She is not. We are not talking about a woman. She is a stranger. Does it say here, the Prophet, he said to them, when your women, they have their period, do with them, isna'u kulla shay illa nikah. Do you see it? Yeah, I see it. Okay. So nikah does not mean marriage. They are their wives. So he's telling them when they have their period, do everything with them, touch them, play with them, etc. But don't do intercourse. So what nikah is? Intercourse. Intercourse. Right, okay. And even in the Muslim translation, they say, don't do with them intercourse. 
when they have their menstruation. So we don't marry them because simply they are already our wives. And now they, yeah, have, so they have their period. So what he said to them, do with them everything except intercourse. Right, so over here in uh, the tafsir you sent me, uh, where it says here, Al-Hamis, Al-Nikahu Balaf Zil-Hiba. Yeah, a woman, she offered herself to the Prophet, Al-Nikahu Balaf Zil-Hiba. So, a woman, she well, offered herself... Just by saying it. Huh? Just by saying it. Yeah, by saying, I offer you myself to sleep with me. He don't pay her. Muhammad have a privilege. He do not need to pay for sex. It's free. Right, yeah, only, only, only Muhammad. Women they can offer themselves to him. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so, my friend, what do you think? <coughs> you want to be a Muslim? You want to stay a Muslim? It's hard because you know I grew I grew up in a Muslim family. So you want to grow up, stay a pagan, following a bad man? So if Islam's not the truth, then what is? Well, you know, if uh, first of all we confirm Islam is not true, then we search for truth. I mean. The point after is your decision where to what what to be, but it's not right to take the wrong ship and the ship have tons of holes and is going to be drawn. You will be drawn. Save yourself, my friend. And for me, if you ask me what is the truth, no, Jesus answer, he said, I am the truth. He didn't say God, he is, he, she, he said, I am the truth. Yeah, well, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, yeah. Exactly. So there's, if you are seeking life, if you are seeking salvation, if you are seeking the truth, you'll find the truth, you'll find Jesus. And then what Jesus says about the truth, he says something so beautiful, so wonderful. The truth will set will you set free. free. Yeah, yeah, I like so Jesus, my friend, will set you free. With Muhammad, you are a slave of Allah. With Messiah, you are a child in the kingdom of God. You are a prince. You are no slave for no one. None of you, none of us. He, she, black, white, Asian, it doesn't matter. All of us, we are children of God. We are saved by Jesus. And we are a children, not a slaves, even though we don't deserve even to be called slaves. Yet, the Lord the creator of the universe he decided to take us as his children so why you want to stay follow such a filthy man he claimed to be the praised one imagine even he changed his name to be the praised one we shall praise him for what reason is he god the word the praised one alone is against monotheism because only god should be praised do we agree yeah yeah so how Muhammad is a man, and he is just a prophet, and he's going after children to have sex with them, and now he is the praised one. And then Jesus, who is holy, he never commits sin, he never slept with the women, he never desired a woman, he never desired money, he never did anything wrong. He spent his life saving life, giving eyes, giving sight, giving you know, making people walk. He was walking, talking, machine of healing and guidance and wisdom and truth and now he is in heaven which one is the one we should follow well obviously we all want to get to heaven more don't we so i say the one in heaven the one in heaven you know once a big sheikh very very powerful man he come to visit my dad at home and he said to him why a man like you very well-known respected man between the Christian why you don't accept Islam you will have a great place between us my father he said to him politely 
He said to him, I want to ask you a simple question. Where is your prophet? He said, oh, he's now? He said, yeah. He says, he's dead. He says, where is, it? Where is Jesus? He said, oh, he's in heaven. So my, my father, he said, well, the Messiah, he said, let the dead bury the dead. I want to follow the living one. So why you want to follow a dead man? He stink with his sin and not to follow the living one who is right now in heaven, even in the book of Muhammad, which is the book of the devil. Admit that Jesus right now in heaven. Which one is powerful? Is the one is dead or the one who lived for thousands and thousands of years? Obviously, the one who's lived for thousands and thousands of years, isn't it? Thank you. Well, now, if I am you, I will accept the Messiah as my Savior, and I will, re you know, reject everything to do with the devil immediately, and his promises, virgins, sex, women, children's gold, silver, even the God of Islam, he promised you cushions. This is how funny it is, the promise. The God of Islam, he promised you even couches. This is how stupid the promise. It's like a Walmart. You know, this is not heaven, my friend. This is not heaven. This is a guy trying to tempt those poor Arab with the sexual temptation and money and gold and silver. This is the devil. So why you don't accept Jesus right now as we speak? Because as you know, my friend, you might go to sleep, either me or you, and we don't wake up. Correct? Yeah, yeah, it can happen, yeah. Nobody knows. And then you will not be saved. So I invite you right now to save yourself, deny Muhammad, deny the devil, and accept the Messiah as your savior. So you will be, your name will be written in the book of God and you will be in his kingdom. I accept him. I mean to that. Happy for you, my friend. So you accept that the Messiah is your savior and Muhammad is a false prophet, correct? Correct. I mean to that, my friend. We pray for you. We pray for your family to listen to you. And I will be happy if you want to bring your family to talk to me. If they are not convinced no, with your decision. The secret. They won't be happy. Oh, no, don't worry. Okay, tell them there's a guy. He talk about Islam. Go talk to him. Let them, let them see. I want to save your family too. Trust me, it will work. Because when they see how bad Muhammad is, they will leave Islam, my friend. Don't you want to save your family? Yeah, but I do, but they won't listen, man. They grew up, they grew up as Muslims. You grew up as a Muslim too. You listen. Put your trust on the Lord, my friend. It's not me who will make them listen. The Lord, he will help. Put your trust. And trust with the trust, by the trust of the Lord, we can do miracles. Not because we are powerful, but because the Lord himself, he do miracle. Isn't it a miracle that you called me today? And actually, I was not even going to call you. I thought you hang up and you're gone. And then I said, let me call you. It's a miracle. The Lord make it happen. It's not me. It's not you. The Lord, he brought me to you. The Lord, he brought you to me. The Lord, he made us listen to each other. And the Lord help you to listen and help me to speak. The wisdom is not mine. The truth is not mine. The truth is the truth and the wisdom of the Lord. If not, he is so good. You yourself, you will not believe. Because there's nothing good on me. Who am I? I'm nobody. Every man is a sinner. How a sinner can make you believe? By his sin? No. A sinner cannot convince anyone of any good. For he is sin. If, he are, if you are good, first fix yourself before you fix others. But because the Lord, the Messiah, he is the good God. When a man, he says to Jesus, you're good. Jesus says to him, why you call me good? Don't you know that only God is good? Jesus is asking him, how you know that I'm God good? 
And then Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep, they knew me. Yeah. Thank you, Christian Prince, for saving me, man. You, I did not save you, my friend. I don't have the honor to save you. The Lord save you. I cannot claim any honor for myself. I'm just a person <laughs> trying to help people. I did not save you. Go now. Pray to the Messiah. Say thank you, the Lord, for giving me the truth today. Today I will I will start a new life with you. And I advise you to start reading the Bible when you are ready. You go to a church of your choice and do baptism so you can have the Holy Spirit within you. You know, every creature have a soul, have a flesh. A Christian, he have a spirit additional to those. So you will soon, after you study the Bible very well, you go to a church of your choice close to you and you ask them to do baptism and may the Lord bless you, bless your life, bless your offspring after you and make them good seed to spread the truth between mankind. You too, Christian Prince. Thank you for that. Thank idea. you. God I bless you. Take, take care, my friend. Anything you want to say to people before you leave? For Muslims, especially. I mean, the, you. I mean, I'll leave, I'll leave that to you. You will add it to me. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll leave it to you. Yeah. All right. All right. Take Thank care. You, CP, yeah. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. okay bye. Bye. Yeah, I think my our friends. I, I I don't want. I didn't ask him, but I think he's an African, right? <clears throat> he sounds like one. Actually, I did not mention to him what Muhammad is about the African. Even it's the most ugly. How an African even even can follow Islam for a second? But it's very beautiful to see, you know, people listen. You see, when you open your heart and you listen, then you will find the truth, and the truth will set you free. Uh, I'm glad I called him again because I thought he is gone. That's it. He will not. He don't want to talk. He was trying to escape you know from the embarrassment but I'm glad I called him again and uh, uh, you know uh, he decided to leave the cult of Muhammad uh, do we have any Muslim wanna call who is a Muslim wanna be next caller Maybe you can convince your brother who just left Islam now to bring him back to Islam. Prove me wrong. Anyone? May they, may they? Somebody asking if I can explain why the Mawuda Suilat. Yeah, this is one of the funny understanding of Muslims of uh, in the Quran they claim that the Arab before Islam they used to bury uh, girls alive that's absolutely a big fat lie imagine if people they bury their daughters then we Arab we will have no offspring simple you know and uh, if you read the verse you will see how silly the way they try to explain it this is a verse speaking about a soul is killed and a human being is killed and nafs qatal nafsan in the Quran he repeat that word qatal nafsan which means he killed, he killed a soul uh, so when the soul is questions for which guilt it was killed the Muslim they say this is about a female burying a female alive but there is nowhere it says that this is about a person who was killed and he commit no guilt so the question is chapter 81 verse number 8 for what guilt in the judgment day God will ask not a female doesn't say even female al mawuda al mawuda goes back to the nafs you see even the word before it, it says soul you see it this is how we get them busted with their lies this is why we Arab Christian we laugh at their understanding of their Quran. So when the soul in the day of judgment will be questions for what reason was killed? 
because the body, the Muslim believe, when the body go to the grave, the soul go back in the grave. So now it is buried with the body. This is why you see the story of the three angels coming to the grave, asking you three questions. Who is your God? Who is, what is your religion? And they show you a picture of Muhammad, which is a very funny story. So there's no female, there's no infant, and this is always a fabrication. So the question is here, what is the guilt you did? And who is the one who killed you? So simply is about the one who killed unjustified killing. And it's funny that Muhammad is speaking about unjustified killing when he is the biggest rapist pirate killer ever. I hope I answered you. Do we have any Muslim? Does Allah have a soul? The Quran say yes. The Muslim they say no because the Quran say clearly my soul, my spirit, nafsi. When Shaitan he spoke to Muhammad, so to Allah, sorry, he says, I know what is in my soul, but I do not know what is in your soul. All right. And then the Muslim, they will start. I mean, the whole interpretation of the Quran, uh, uh, is is a is a fiction. تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك. You know what is in my soul. Which means how bad he covered the good it is, and I do not know what you have in your soul. And all of this garbage here we see in the Quran speaking about nafsi, nafsaka, nafsuku, and etc. All right. And this is the chapter you mentioned. This is and actually can be found in chapter five, verse one sixteen. And this one is about Asa, supposedly, but we have other one about Shaitan. Do we have another Muslim? Any Mohammedan? And look how the Muslim they translate. I mean, the translation is really very funny. It says here, you, uh, what's indeed known, have it, knows what is in my heart, and I know not what is in thine. What is that? This is not what Arabic says. We change the translator. This is Yusuf Ali. Let us uh, see uh, uh, Muhsin Khan. Muslim translation is like, you know, is like a fiction translation. Instead of translating, they make it really weird. Uh, look! Look at the translation here. I know uh, you know what is on in my inner self, and I do not know what in is in yours. But this is not what it says. It says nafsi, or nafsika. And this is a conversation between uh, Isa, supposedly, not Jesus. Yeah, Abdul Rahman. He can text me. My Skype is open. What I will do to him? You know, if you search for the word nafs in the Quran, nafs always come as a soul. Chapter 2, verse number 48, chapter 2, verse 123, chapter 2, verse 233, chapter 2, 281, etc. All of those is about a soul.
and the translation uh, again false it says everyone shall taste death it says every soul shall taste death nafs chapter 5 verse number 32 as an example it says the one who killed an innocent soul unjustly and this is supposedly a verse was given to Moses Muhammad he is quoting the Torah this is the same verse the stupid Obama he quote when he made a speech in Egypt but the stupid Obama he forgot that this is Muhammad quoting the Torah and Muhammad himself he killed a lot of innocent people even the verse in the front of you is speaking about we gave this to the children of Israel the children of Israel, this is their guideline. The one who killed one innocent person as if he killed all mankind. This is not in Islam. Do we have any Muhammadan? All right, look like we are out of uh, Muslims for today. Uh, guys, I hope I did not make you cry. And uh, don't forget that Shaitan, he can make you cry, especially by making you farting when you are in the mosque. Uh, Shaitan, he take care from your anus. And that's very dangerous business. Uh, Shaitan can cause you farting and stop, even though you are devoted Muslim praying to Allah and uh, shaitan can uh, plan you know to make your uh, your butt uh, as a gun machine to fight against allah so be aware of the tricks of shaitan he is very powerful especially when it's come to farting and make you crying from farting gas is used not only now by saddam hussein or the american or taliban chemical weapon no it used since ancient times shaitan is the first one to use it for it goes well First of all, it is mandatory upon... So, he knows once did a lot of things in order to try to counteract this, but he wants to fight this, so what, sh what should he do? And realized that Shaitan was trying to make him stop praying. So he tried to fight it by ignoring it but then it kept on coming and coming and coming Every here you see how much a struggle a muslim he go through because his life is a continuous farting allah is unable to stop him from farting even though he is in the mosque and supposedly there's two angels one in the right side and one in the left side if you see a muslim he pray he move his head to the right when he finish and then he move his head to the left why because there is two angels guarding him. And then you ask yourself how shaitan coming to you, taking care of him your anus, inside the house of Allah, a house is full of angels, and yet the angels of Allah cannot stop shaitan from making you fart by taking care of from your anus. Pray, gas is released all the time, and this is not a doubt. This person certainly knows something came out. And this only happens whenever he prays. Only happen when he is praying, shaitan make him fart. So my friends, if you want to save yourself from the fart of Islam, you better leave it. As they say, fart in, fart out. Garbage in, garbage out. You will not find any religion in the world say such as stupid things except in Islam even the Hindus even the Buddhist even the most awkward weirdo religion in the world you will not find such a stupidity except in Islam shaitan play with your anus shaitan play with your bows shaitan round himself around your penis shaitan having sex with your wife shaitan biting her nipples shaitan set her pubic area in fire and you get to distinguish and you call the fire department because you saw a fire between her legs and all those stories you'll find them only in the stupid religion of islam and 
I don't blame you to be stupid when you follow a stupid one. I mean, you are stupid by nature, then what I can do? If this is what you follow, I'm not going to question why. Because obviously you must be stupid. This is the religion of the weirdo. And the more weirdo you are, the more you go for it. And then you will see all those videos reaction for the Quran and I die laughing. The second you start reading the Quran, you will cry from the stupidity. You will cry laughing, but you will not cry because it's amazing. They bring you a guy, have a nice voice. He sing for you. I mean, those guys, if you give them a, a, a song full of about uh, uh, the F word, their voice will sound fine. They bring you professional people to recite the Quran. And, and as if they aren't professional, they make a, they add echo to the sound to make it like a holy sound. But the Quran is the most stupid book, as you see. Anyway, I want to say thank you for the Muslims who support me and the Muslims who uh, send donation. May Allah bless you and give you more versions. And, uh, you know, uh, I cannot say uh, may Allah extend your penis because it's already endless. So there is no wish, no point of this wish. I mean, nobody knows where it's going to end. So I'm not going to go there. But I want to say thank you, Muslims, for your support, because you support me more than Christians. At least you curse me. Uh, you bless me your curse. Uh, at least you make a threat against me. That is a blessing for me. Uh, at least you make uh, a lot of videos to attack me and to smear me. That is even better for me. Uh, but Christians, they do nothing. You know, look at that Christian. You know? So I decided today to ask Muslims to support me because I noticed that Muslims, they can do better support, especially with their farting skills. So what about all of you Muslims today? You start donating some of your farting wallet. Support the cause. Because there's only one Christian prince. And he make millions of Muslims cry laughing at Muhammad. Prove me wrong and call me again. Christ is Lord. Islam is a fraud. We prove it every time. Take care.